Alright, I'm gonna show you how how the the camera thing works. So basically, the way that it works is you put a keyframe at the start of the timeline before like any events happen. You see how I get a kill on this guy? Maybe a little bit before the kill, but like right here maybe. You just put a single time keyframe because the time keyframe is what like loads in all the players. Then you just play out the clip a bit, you know, like get to where the kill is, where I run over. So I want to do a cine of me up against the wall like this. You have the time keyframe from earlier, so just move this like a few seconds forward to give the players time to load in. And then, you know, make your cine you got... And yeah, so that's that's your camera path. Now, the, now this is how it looks. So at first you'll get like a random generated position because you know a time keyframe by itself doesn't create a position, so it just goes to the spawn point, and then it'll play your camera path, and everything will be loaded in because you placed a time keyframe. That's how you make your players load in. So now I'm gonna show you what I the old method was that I showed you in the tutorial. Usually the first two keyframes that you place don't load in automatically. So usually. You have two keyframes of absolutely nothing. It gives the computer time to load in both of the players. So basically, the old method was, let's say that I was about to go get a kill. Uh, instead of doing that, I would do like, I would do just a random, like I'd put my camera in a random place, and it had both of these. I like two starting keyframes at just like a random place. And then directly after that, after that is when I would start my uh, camera path. And it, it works, but the time method is way better, like, just with one time keyframe. This is what it looks like. You just got two random keyframes at the start, giving your player time to load in. And then it, like, makeshifts into where it needs to be. But it kind of can mess up your interpolation like that, because there were keyframes prior. And the farther away your keyframe is from where the original clip starts, it's gonna, like, move it, like, inverse where it's supposed to be. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have done, like, this whole loop, like, into the wall if there wasn't a keyframe there because it pushed it like that way just because of the interpolation so it's better to just do the the time method and i just showed you how to do that so yeah that's how you that's how you work with start keyframes